Welcome back to the Triple Threat Podcast. My name is Ishan Cheth. Alongside me is William Bizell, as always. Here's part two of our quarterback ranking, 28 through 25. We have four QBs to talk about. And before we get into it, just a reminder to subscribe, like, and comment your thoughts, especially after the video. We'll be sure to get back to you. And also check out the website. We'll be releasing all of our position rankings, not only for quarterbacks, but for every single position in the NFL. I don't think we're doing long snappers though. No. <laughs> and you can see more in-depth analysis, some of the stat, some of the snaps that we, stats that we go over. And you know, there's also some other great NBA content on there, like why Joel Embiid is the most overrated player in the NBA. Sorry, Philly fans. I am Team Simmons. I think you are too, Will. Uh, yes, I am. But if you want the too long, didn't read for the first part, we have Alex Smith, 33, Gunnar Minshew, Jared Goff, Kent Newton, Mitchell Trubisky. And that leads us at 28, where we have Sam Darnold. So uh, Sam Darnold, let's just start it off. He, he hasn't had time to really gel or really get a used to the NFL whenever he has like a, a streak of four or five games well he's out for some reason and the best ability is availability and he just hasn't been able to stay on the field for long enough to do anything of matter uh, he's shown flashes of why he was picked third overall but there he he wasn't a great prospect of Maya's coming out so he he has a lot of work to to do but I think that if you're a trade for a team like what San Francisco, Pittsburgh, like Indianapolis next season, he could be really good, but he hasn't shown that body of work yet. So he's 7.6 intended air yard per attempt, but only three completed air yards per attempt or per completion. So a lot of discrepancy there. 17 passes thrown away despite two to four get games less than anyone else ahead of him. So he might have been first in the league in throwaways if he were able to give the whole season. He has a lot of pressures. He sacked almost the same amount of times as Joe Burrow was in the same amount of games. Dead last in adjusted net yards per attempt. Dead last in QB rating. Uh, Sam Darnold has had a lot go against him, but I think that he has the ability to do something. He's got a lot of talent, but he just hasn't shown it yet. And his receiving core was, was solid this season. I mean, We've seen a lot of injuries. Crowder's been hurt. Paraman's been hurt. Mims has been hurt. So he hasn't had a lot to work with, but there's three solid guys there. I know they weren't on the field at the same time. Their offensive line wasn't great. He hasn't had a lot to work with. I don't think he's a terrible coach. So if he goes to the right system, maybe he can be something, but I don't see him being a, a top 16 quarterback in his career. Wow, that's a pretty harsh especially for a guy that was picked ahead of Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen. But for Sam Darnold, I think we all know that the Jets are going to be moving on from him this offseason. There's Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, and if Jacksonville wins the game, there's Trevor Lawrence. And I think it would be really interesting to see where he ends up. You mentioned Pittsburgh, and as a guy that enjoys watching some Steelers football, I would like him there. He has a lot of... um, He has a lot of people that, you know, he can throw to. He has, on paper, a solid running game. It just hasn't really translated yet. But on the receiving end, you have Deontay Johnson, James Washington, non-dancing Juju Smith-Schuster, and Chase Claypool. All have played well at points in the season. You got Eric Ebron in a good line. So I think maybe he takes a year or two to learn behind Roethlisberger, who has been there, done that. He was thrown into the fire early in his career, but unlike Darnold, he won a Super Bowl. (laughs) But um, I think learning behind a guy like Roethlisberger, who has been at some points in his career a top five quarterback and has been a two-time Super Bowl champion and has been to the Super Bowl three times, I think that could be really good for him. And maybe I'm going to be a bit less harsh. He develops into a top, let's say, 12 to 15 quarterback. Yeah, if he were to go to Pittsburgh, I could see that happening. Um, I guess that was a little bit harsh with that. I think I think at the right fit, he could be a top top 12, top 10 quarterback. But in, in New York, he'll never, ever be that. So I guess it's a bit harsh with that. You're right. Yeah, especially with uh, Adam Gase as his coach. No, it does not help. So another guy who has been off the field at times and has had some serious problems is Carson Wentz. I think that Jalen Hurts, would you say that he's the – New long-time answer for Philly? He's a better fit. Yeah. 
So I have him at 20, 27. And I think that right now, I am as a top 10 going into the season. And I think that a lot of people did because he was ex- exceptional last season with no offensive weapons at all. He has been an MVP candidate. He should have been MVP if he stayed healthy. If he didn't tear his, Achille- uh, tear his ACL against the Rams, he would have been the MVP. But his problem is, is since then, he's been trying to play hero ball. He's trying to, be, to prove that he was the MVP and that uh, he's better than Nick Foles, that he was the right choice every single play. Every single play he plays, like the game's on the line, like his career's on the line. And because of that, his job is actually on the line now. Like he is the bench player, the bench quarterback by a significant margin of the way Jalen Hurts has played. And as you've noticed, Jalen Hurts is ahead of him in this rankings. So I think that he's just trying to prove something every snap. And then that's just compound with Doug Pearson's dreadful play calling. Just does not help him. Because Doug Pearson is just leaning into that aggressive mentality and just pushing it forward and forward. And what you're seeing that he's just not a good coach. Doug Pierce just wants to be aggressive way too much. And with Travis Fulgham as your number one receiver for most of the season, that's just not going to work. Mm-hmm. And then another problem that he has, he just doesn't trust his receivers in contested situations. Like you look white guys like Alvin Jeffrey and Zach, which are so much better with Nick Foles. It's because Nick Foles trusts his receivers, even though they might not be open. And I said this in the last episode, it's about throwing open and anticipating and charging your receivers. Just throwing the ball out there and trusting, oh, 50-50 ball, Alvin Jeffrey can probably come down with this. And Jalen, Jalen Hurts already seems to have that, that trust in his receivers where Carson Wentz is just like, I only throw it to you if you're open. I think that was another problem that he had. And then some more statistics. He is first in intended air yards, but are uh, intended air yards, but on completions, he is 1.3 lower. So that's a huge difference, one of the biggest differences in the NFL. I think like third or fourth biggest difference between intended air yards per attempt and intended air yards per completion. He only has Four yards after catch, which is not great. I think that's one of the lowest in the league. That could be due to poor receiver play or bad placement, probably both of them. He's had shaky mechanics throughout the year, not consistent, which led to him being second in bad throws, which is probably compounded because he's just pushing it down the field way too much. Um, he has – Cousins has the same amount of play action as him, but twice the yards. So he's just really inefficient on play action. That could be attributed to the run game and coaching as well but he's just not really being effective on the situations where he's being given to success because play action is designed for the quarterback to make easy reads, boom, and then bu- trick the de- uh, pull the defense in, pull the receiver over the top. Like, that's where the quarterbacks usually thrives in play action. Look at Baker Mayfield, Jared Goff. Guys that are pretty average, can be really good on play action. He's first in sacks. He hasn't six in pressure rate, so he's just not seeing pressure. He's not feeling it. And that's because he wants to push the ball down the field. He's holding on to the ball too, mo- too long. I mean, he has decent legs. Like, he can move. But he just doesn't want to get out of the pocket. He wants to throw the ball. And he's just aggressive to a fault. He's fifth in yards per scramble, but only less than – has only 12 scrambles. Less than He has 12 scrambles less than Teddy at 24. So he's just staying in the pocket too long, wants to make a big play, getting sacked, getting hit, throwing interceptions. And that's just really – coaching – mentality, confidence, everything is just going wrong for someone who has been a top 10 quarterback. And right now he's 27. Yeah, I think that the talent is there. And we've seen it in previous years where Carson Wentz has been a very talented quarterback. But a lot of football is a mental game. And it can be tough for a lot of players to adjust and prove themselves, especially after you do so well. And then another guy comes in after you get injured leads your team to a Super Bowl win, and you're kind of forgotten about. When a lot of casual fans think about that season, they think, oh, Nick Foles led them to the Super Bowl. But you forget that Carson once led them to a 13-3 and record and placed them in the situation for Nick Foles to easily pick up on. So that really can destroy someone's mentality. I think that that's what we've seen here with Carson once. I mean, you look at, like, the Falcons – like mentality, it, I know you hate it, but I think that's a fair fair point. Like mentality is everything in the NFL. Yeah. Since t- since going to the Super Bowl, I think they're 28 and 35. Yeah, we have not been able to mentally recover from that. You can just look at the front office and the decisions that they made. And they've just been in this frantic frenzy of trying to contend while our championship window just slowly closes with Matt Ryan and Julio Jones getting older, and I'm going to cry soon, so let's move on. But um, 
<laughs> Moving on to number 26, Daniel Jones of the New York Giants. Statistically has not been the best. Fifth to last in QB rating, 30th out of 36 in adjusted yards gained per pass attempt. But at the same time, he does get pressured a lot with a 28.5 pressure percentage. And that's kind of a testament to how bad that line can be. But he is a good scrambler, 8.1 yards per scramble. That's probably a little inflated by that one big run. It's not. He's just a really good runner. He is a good runner, though. But I like to see him run a little bit more. He's had 19 total scrambles, which is 15th in the league. So guys like Aaron Rodgers and Sam Darnold and Gardner Minshew are ahead of him there, just to pick three random names. So I'd like to see him scramble a little bit more because he is a good runner and has the capability to get yards on the ground as well. So what are your thoughts on Daniel Jones? I thought he had a, a better rookie, rookie season than I anticipated. I thought he was a second-round quarterback coming out, and I think that we saw that this season. Um, I think that he's got a lot of potential. He's shown flashes of being good, but he has a one of his big problems is just not sensing the pass rush, and that's why you see such a big fumble problem with him. I think he's averaged over a fumble per game through his career, which is just way too many. Like, you cannot be doing that. Like, that's Carson Wentz this number season. That's Jameis Winston last season statistics. Like, those are just not good. And then I think he has about three wins outside of the football team through his entire career. Like, he's just not contributing to winning football. I know his line has been really dreadful, but they put a lot of work into improving that. I know it hasn't paid off yet, but they put a lot of work into that. He's got a decent receiving core. Darius Slayton's been really solid. And I just think that he... Uh, I like him a lot. I think Slayton could be a lot better in this and with the, any other quarterback. Golden Tate solid, Sterling Shepard solid, then uh, Evan Ingram solid, and then we see guys like Colt McCoy has been able to be as an efficient quarterback in this system. And then you just wonder how much does Daniel Jones offer over that? He's fifth to last in QBR or in QB rating. He's thirty at thirty six into the air yards gain per pass attempt. Um, he gets pressure a lot, as I said, 28.5% pressure, but he's efficient scramble, as you said. So uh, he's got some positive, he's got some downside. He can easily move up this list to be a top 16 quarterback soon. But I think that right now, either you have to strengthen around him or look at the Cardinals. I think that they're the prime example. If you're in the top of the draft, I mean, the Giants won't be, but they can get maybe a Trey Lance, a Kyle Trask in that draft pick. I know they're never going to do that. They're not going to admit they were wrong with the other ones. And they're, they, they, they have been wrong yet. Like, he's been solid, but he hasn't been that sixth pick. But maybe he's been the 16th pick. I think there's room to work with him. But Yeah. So as of right now, I'm just looking at CBS. We have the Giants at number 10 in the mock draft. So I don't think Zach Wilson would be there, but he could be. You could maybe reach a little bit on Kyle Trask. But who do you see as a potential, you know, draft target for the Giants if they do keep Daniel Jones going forward? Um, you got to look at guys like Devontae Smith, Jamar Chase. I mean, give him some weapons. I know Stegon Barthel is out, and that's a big part of their offense. Get another star receiver in there. Get some separation for him to throw to. I think Devontae, Rondell Moore could be a really interesting target there. And, and then Rashad Bateman. You just look at guys who can get open, get separation, make a job, make life easy for a quarterback. So Jalen Waddle, there's a lot of guys that can help. I'd go receiver help because you've already got some pieces on that line. Kevin Zeitler, uh, Will Andrew Hernandez, Thomas. Andrew Thomas. So you've got some pieces that you can work with. I think that you're probably going to want to go for a right tackle soon. I don't see a, a good option available at this point yet. I know I haven't done my draft rankings yet, so I don't have a lot of information on the draft, but – I can imagine this would be a good spot for a Devontae Smith, Jamar Chase to come off the board. Jamar Chase is probably gone at this point, but if someone picked Devontae first, Jamar could be here. You'll get one of the two, I think, in my opinion. Yeah, I think that you could definitely get one of the two. Both have proven in college to be very great receivers and can translate well to the next level. And yeah, besides Panay Sewell, who will likely go to Cincinnati in the Better top Better go to Cincinnati. Yeah. Yeah, Joe Burrow needs him. I think the next guy up at that tackle position is Rayshon Slater out of Northwestern. And I'm not too sure if he can be that right tackle kind of guy. 
but him and Andrew Thomas could maybe work out. So that was the other guy that I was thinking of besides the um, receivers like Smith and Chase and Waddle or Bateman. I think that so, a good tackle might be, I think a um, BYU guy, uh, Brady Christensen is pretty solid too. I think that he could be a sleeper in that 10th spot, but I'd probably wait on him a little bit. I, I don't know what the consist- consensus is and where his where he's going to draft. Yeah, maybe if they make the playoffs and they slide down like 10 draft picks, that could Big help difference. a little bit. Yeah. So our final quarterback of the second installment is Drew Locke of the Denver Broncos. He played very well his rookie season. He led the team to a four or five and one record. And he has some pretty high expectations coming into the season. And while he has played well and has shown flashes, he's played very erotically. And it does help losing Pro Bowl receiver Cortland Sutton. So what are your thoughts on Drew Locke? Erratic is the word, to say the least. He has the ability, as you said. But as we see with Missouri and in a lesser extent in Denver, he wants to make the big play. He wants to be the guy to force everything. And when he was in college, I kind of attributed that to him not having a lot of weapons and just him having to do that to make that team's offense successful. But he doesn't have to do that at the NFL, NFL level. He has 8.8 or 8.6 intended air yards and then only 6.1 on completions. That is the biggest or second big, biggest discrepancy of 1.5 in intended air yards per completion and intended air yard per attempt. So that's just showing you that he's pushing the ball down the field a lot, but those deep shots are just not getting completed. I think that's a problem. I mean, you, you have a good deep shot guy in KJ Hamler. So I think Corlin Sutton's really going to help that offense get back on track. He hasn't had the, the health to be able to, as I, like, just like Sam Brown, hasn't had the health to like build into his season. Defense has loved to blitz him because his decision making is really, really poor against the blitz. So that's just where you got to strengthen on the offensive line. I know uh, Garrett Bowles has been good, but you've got a lot of other issues on that offensive line to deal with. I think what Jawan, the guys I signed, the guy that over Jawan James, the guy they signed from um, the Dolphins two years ago, opted out this season. So that was a big loss for them. But he was blitzed a hundred and I forget the number, but. If he played all 14 games, he would have led the league in blitzes. So the defenses know how to stop him. And he holds on to the ball for way too long. 2.7 times to throw, which is the highest in the league. He's trying to do too much. He's trying to push the ball down the field. Uh, he wants to be that guy. You see in the in the interviews after the game, he's like, oh, I'm happy. I threw 200 yards. Go me. But you look at the Carolina game, pass rating of 149.2 against a decent secondary. I mean, he has the ability to be a really, really good quarterback. I think he has the ability to be a top end quarterback. Drew Locke has special talent. I think that he's a guy that fell to the second round kind of unfairly, but you look at between him and Daniel Jones, I mean, Daniel Jones could have fallen down there and it'd be a similar situation because it's a guy that's shown flashes and been able to prove to be solid. So I think that it's, there's just a lot of value in that quarterback position, which is seeing a guy shoot up the draft. But I think that if you get the right offensive corner in there, I don't think Patrick Murray's been the right guy. Just to slow him down, get the right decision making. Like if, if he was with Sean Payne in New Orleans, I know I'm probably gonna say that because I'm biased, but you get him with the offensive mind that likes to throw intermediate, well not loves to, but has been able to adapt to his quarterback strengths. You can say, look, Drew Lock, be smart. You can throw deep, we'll call shots for you. But when we call shots, the guy's gonna be open. You don't have to throw it if it's not there. If it's not there, throw the check down. Only thought if you can make it. So, special talent, man. Special talent. Anything else you yeah. Um, I was gonna, I was gonna be a little bit harsher, but yes, he is a special talent, and I think you're right. He does have a lot of mental flaws, and um, he was ninth in bad throws this year, despite playing only 11 games. So that kind of worries me. And in terms of on-target throwing percentage. He was dead last out of the 36 eligible quarterbacks with only 68.6% of his throws being um, on target. So that's a pretty wi- wide margin that I think he will fix over time. I mean, it's, it's a lot of things that, a lot of red flags with Drew Locke and you have to get someone in there to fix those, to get those mental mistakes out because if, if, he, just, if he just slows it down, I mean, he went four and one, only lost to the Chiefs last season in the snow. 
I mean, it was a bad game, but I think that he has the ability. Get him his tackles back. He has two solid, two really good tackles to move forward with. He's got three really, really good receivers, two really good tight ends. He has the ability to be a really good offense. And with a good defense with Vic Fangio, I think this team has the ability to do well. And I think that you just you just got to slow him down. Put him on a leash. Mm-hmm. Put him on a leash because he, he should not be throwing the ball this deep. Only that have like design deep shots once every couple quarters. Like don't throw a deep shot every play. You don't have to do it. You don't have to w- win everyone over every play. Just like Carson Wentz. Yeah. So that wraps up our second installment in the quarterback rankings. We had Sam Darnold, Carson Wentz, Daniel Jones, and Drew Locke at um, 28 to 25. We had a few young guys and some more experienced veterans in this list. And I think these next couple of installments will be really exciting. So stay tuned. We're going to be talking about some rookies, some sophomores, and some older guys on championship contenders. So remember to subscribe, check out the website, and check out the first installment if you haven't already.